Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Oshley here and in today's video I want to talk about some beautiful book covers. I am so excited you guys to talk about this. I cannot wait. I scoured my shelves and I have stacks right here and I'm going to show you guys of all the beautiful book covers that I found. Now beauty is in the high, high. beauty is in the eye of the beholder as they say. So beauty is subjective, you know, what may be beautiful to me may not be beautiful to someone else, may not be beautiful to you, and so forth and so on. For me, I just found covers that I just instinctively, instinctively, I can't talk, instinctively and just intuitively felt were beautiful and just I felt drawn to them and they gave me that sense of satisfaction. Like when I look at them, I just feel like, mmm, yes, this is it. This is it. Also, I found covers that made me want to read the books and I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but a lot of times we gravitate towards books because of their covers and for me, I don't know about you, a lot of times I end up buying books because of the cover. Sorry, the dogs. You guys know my life story already with these dogs. They're going crazy in the background. But without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Definitely let me know if you find any of these covers beautiful, if you own any of these books, and what beautiful book covers you love. Let's go. As always, gotta turn off my bark box. I feel like it gives like a weird energy. Okay, so the first book I wanted to show you guys is The Queen, My Girl Holly Black. This is the darkest part of the forest. And I don't know if you're able to really see because I know I have my, my studio lights on. This cover, you guys, this cover is everything. This cover is life itself. I am freaking obsessed with this cover. I think it is absolutely stunning. I don't know, it just speaks to me and it goes so well with the title and it has a blue butterfly in here, butterfly, butterfly in here. And you know, whenever I see it, I love butterflies, but you know how you go down? Guys, you guys, I'm filming. They don't care. You know how you go down that dark rabbit hole of YouTube and you just end up on like the conspiracy side and the Illuminati and all that stuff? So those videos have really ruined butterflies for me. <laughs> if you know, you know. But yeah, so besides that, <laughs> I still do love butterflies. Um, I love how you kind of have the white font and the writing just pops out and the greenery in the background. I love how these two. I love how the book is mostly green and white. Fun fact, my favorite color is green. So this also just speaks to me on that level. I love the spine and how the spine is basically just an encapsulation of what's on the front. And then I really love the back and kind of like the larger font, kind of just giving the synopsis. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it, but it's probably gonna be hard to see it in this lighting. Sorry, you guys. I also love the deckled edges. I know deckled edges are kind of controversial here on booktube, the things that we, you know, find controversial. But I actually really enjoy deckled edges. I like that it's kind of like a thicker material and how like the pages are kind of uneven. It makes it feel like parchment, like bound parchment paper, like very old school, like when they used to write with ink pens back in the day. So yeah, I spent enough time on this. I have a ton of more books to show you, so let's trot right along. The next book I have here is Alias Hook by Lisa Jensen. Um, now, I've never read this. It, I have had it in my TBR numerous times. I've just never gotten to it. I think this is the story of Captain Hook, but I freaking, I'm obsessed with this cover. I think it is gorgeous. Now, even though green is my favorite color, I really also do enjoy blues and kind of blue toned things and like blue vibes. Hold on you guys, I, I can't, this is so distracting. I am so sorry you guys, it was just too much. Okay, back to Alias Hook or Elias Hook, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but this blue and it's kind of like a, it's almost like a bluish purple, it's not a true blue and then you have the white and then you have the red kind of offsetting it. It looks like red roses. It looks like this these tree branches just kind of overtook the entire book. The trees are upside down down here with the roses attached. Oh, you guys, I cannot win for trying. These dogs are driving me insane. I put one dog in my room and then I have the puppy out here and of course he wants to play with his squeaky toys because why not? Um, then you have the roses on here and then you have a little, you have a little hook. Captain Hook, you can see him when he's hooked hand and his sword. 
I mean, it's just so deliciously satisfying. I love like the little like pirate ship right here and the star. It's just so satisfying. Whenever I look at this cover, I love the spine. You have hook on the spine. It's just, and on the back you have the waves and then the little ship again with the star. It's just extremely satisfying to look at this. I love it. Next up, I have the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. And this cover is just stunning. Can you guys see it? I feel like the white covers are going to be harder to see. But it does have the demon right here. And I love the little details on him. He has like purple lips and a green nose with like blue eye bags and green horns and reddish body with the long nails. And he's writing, right, the letters. And then we have this like foil font that says screw tape and it says the illustrated screw tape letters. I love how like the screw tape word stands out in the foil and it's just this red color. It's very clean, very simple. I don't know. I really just enjoy this. I really enjoy this. I love it. Next up we have a nonfiction read and I'm trying to like make sure that you guys can see this. This is The Cross Project by Jonathan Franzen. I love the neutral tones in this cover. It's white and kind of like a beige-ish, beige yellowish, creamish. I don't even know how to describe it. And I don't even quite know what I'm looking at when I look at the illustration. I do see something that looks like a smoking gun or a cannon of sorts and like the fumes or the clouds coming out kind of just wraps around the font for the title and expands down here. And then we have these kind of gargoyle like um, knockers. They look like door knockers but they just like are gargoyles and then you have his name in this nice bubble. I don't know, it's just satisfying. Like I just like it, you know, like I don't know. When I look at it, I'm just like, oh. even the spine, it's just simple and clean. Then you have like the same gargoyle, demonish looking dudes on the back, on each side of his name. I don't know, I love this book cover. For a nonfiction book, this is it. Next up is a book that was actually on my TBR for July that I have not yet gotten to, of course, story of my life. And that is Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. And this is Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany D. Jackson's latest release. This cover gives me so much joy and happiness. I always love to see black people on the cover of books, especially black teens, because I didn't have this when I was growing up. And I just think about how much differently like I would have felt about myself and my self-esteem and my sense of like representation and being seen in the world if I had seen more books outside of like trauma porn type books talking about slavery and things like that that had black teens on the book you know like how much more just grounded and confident I would have felt and seen and appreciated and acknowledged and known and just uh but yes I freaking love this and I love the various skin tones of the teens and undertones and I love that she has puffs in her hair and I like connect with that. I love that she's wearing an Africa necklace. Like I know tons of people who have that. Like the boys, even the way that they're dressed, like they could be my brothers, my cousins, my neighbors. Like I freaking am obsessed with this. And of course you have like the colorful background with all the different colors and the music notes. I think this is fabulous, you guys. The spine is very reminiscent of the cover as well. On the back you have kind of the blurb and all the different color colors represented in the front. It's overall just a beautiful book cover and I can only hope to have a cover like so stunning and representative of my book when I'm finally published. So good. I have just had all the interruptions in this video. I just got my food delivered via DoorDash, Maggiano's Italian four cheese ravioli, which I will be enjoying after I finish filming this. So I'm gonna go put this away. <laughs> this video is all over the place, you guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, next up I have The Poet X by my girl, Elizabeth Acevedo. Now, I always encourage you guys to listen to the audiobook, but of course I have the physical book because I just found the cover to be absolutely stunning. And unfortunately, this cover has been tainted now because there is a controversy and a scandal surrounding this cover. And apparently this is actually a real photo. And the illustrator of this cover 
stole this girl's photo essentially that was taken by a photographer not related to the illustrator in any way and he basically stole her photo rendered it into this piece of artwork added some things and tried to pass it off as original artwork and presented it for elizabeth acevedo's book cover and you know what he was able to get away with it for quite some time until the girl because of social media recognized herself and was like oh my goodness that's my that's me that's my face that's my photo no one ever gave permission or asked me about this and my likeness and image was just stolen and bastardized on this book cover so that is really unfortunate but outside of that this is a beautiful cover and that's what makes it so sad and so just unnecessary it kind of taints elizabeth acevedo's debut book at the same time nothing can stop her shine we're going to always praise her for her magnificence and the writing and this topic and just everything so we're not going to allow it to take away from her but it is really annoying because this really could have been an easy solution the illustrator could have simply reached out to the photographer and to the girl and gotten their permission and i'm sure she would have said yes i'm sure she would have been flattered and everything would have been fine but of course but I digress, it is a beautiful picture. The girl is gorgeous. I remember it, that's what really drew me to the novel before I even knew anything about it was this cover and how just intriguing it looked and how the phenotype and the features of the girl are very like, you know, close to mine, like the broader nose, the fuller lips, the hair, the kinky hair. So yeah, I'm with it outside of the fraudulence. On a brighter note, we have Elizabeth Acevedo's second release and newest um, release, <laughs> and this is With the Fire on High. This cover always takes my breath away. Whenever I look at it, I am filled with so much happiness and joy and satisfaction. It is literally perfection to me. I normally don't like people on covers, but this is people, a person on a cover done so well. I love like we have her natural hair, we have an updo, we have the hoops. Like instantly I connect with this girl and I know where she's coming from, I know her style, I know her vibe. Like her shirt with the little like flower and then you have all the fruits because she's a chef. It's just beautiful you guys. It's absolutely stunning. I love the colors, you know, this maroon bleeding into the colors of the fruits, bleeding into this orange and this red. It's perfection! The fruits on the back, I mean, it's just, I freaking am obsessed with this cover. Like, I love to just look at it. Again, it really drew me to wanting to buy the book. I was gonna buy it anyway, it's Elizabeth Acevedo, I stand for her now, but everything about this cover was just like drawing me in. I'm just like, I'm gonna have it! Love it. Next up, I have The Death of Bees by Lisa O'Donnell. And this is a novel I've owned for years now and I still haven't read. Mm, slap on the wrist. What else is new? My ever-growing TBR pile, right? But this book is just, again, like the satisfaction I get from looking at this cover. How it's mostly these blue tones that bleeds into this kind of purple tone. Excuse Teddy, he will cry outside forever. I love how her name is in the blue font and then the title is in the white and it's just stark and pops out. We see the tree, we see they're clearly in some type of graveyard. We have the kind of pinkish, pinkish, reddish, purplish. Um, we don't quite know what this is. Are they weeds? And then they're kind of reflected here in the dark and the shovel and the two girls. Like instantly you just get the vibe of this novel. You know immediately what it's about or at least Kind of the tone of it and the subject matter it's going to be a little bit more serious it's going to be a little bit deeper it's going to be a little bit more tough to digest i mean they are in a graveyard with a shovel or in a backyard even worse even worse with a shovel what is going on so i think the cover does an amazing job of just right away letting you know what you're in for when you pop open the book next up is a book that i bought bought, bought solely for the cover this happens to me every time i go to barnes and noble because I really enjoy the bookstore experience because I remember when I was a kid, I never, we didn't have Goodreads, right? And we didn't have Amazon and Amazon reviews. You just went to a bookstore, you went to the library, you never really knew what books were about. You just kind of picked them up based on the cover and based on the synopsis. And so I like to recreate that experience whenever I go to a bookstore. And um, the bookstore I frequent the most is Barnes and Noble here in my town. Not as often as I would like, but whenever I walk in, I love to just browse the aisles and <laughs> nine times out of ten, a book will capture me that I have never heard of before. No, 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 no. 
never heard of before and it, I'm just drawn in and sucked in by a beautiful cover and I just buy it because it's just reminiscent of my childhood. I say all that to say Mosquito Land and this is by David Arnold and like I said I only bought this because of the cover and then you know later on these dogs these dogs these dogs no stop it um I only bought it because of the cover I was just sucked in and I immediately just did it and okay hold on you guys again so sorry they can't be quiet when they're together but then they don't want to be separated make it make sense so mosquito land I later had heard great things about the book and I'm really excited to finally get to it at some point but this cover is extremely satisfying it gives me very 70s vibes with this kind of aqua Tiffany blue it's like a muted Tiffany blue and um, more on the greenish side and then you have this young lady it looks like a young lady sitting on top of the bus reading my type of girl my type of female protagonist with her backpack and then you have this like old school 70s type bus deal with the people inside the orange is very satisfying the lime green is very satisfying the kind of white font outlined in orange is very satisfying just everything about this is great and then it continues on in the back with the same color scheme and tones and the rest of the bus 10 out of 10 guys. 10 out of 10 now I know I said I am not a fan of people on book covers, but I do have a few exceptions on this list and this is another one and this is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. Everything about this cover just really gives me everything I need for the perfect summer read. It really just takes me there. I look at this cover and I immediately know what I'm getting into in the sense of the vibe, the summer readiness of it all, the friendship nips of it all. Like these two beautiful girls are sitting on a sidewalk dressed like pretty differently but so you can tell immediately like they're very different <laughs> even from their sunglasses down to their shoe wear down to everything you can tell two very strong but different personalities the ice cream cones like i mean tell me this does not give you the summary feeling that you need when you're looking for the perfect summer read i mean the greenery around it all you guys know how i feel about green and greenery it's just great and then the back is even better you have like an aerial view of these two girls laying on a picnic table with a pizza box on the ground. It's so lush, it's so green, it's so summery, it's so gorgeous. Like, it's everything. I freaking love this cover. All right, had to separate the dogs again. I do apologize. Next up, I have a two for one type deal, and these are both by Renee Audier, and it's the duology The Wrath of the Dawn, The Wrath and the Dawn, excuse me, and The Rose and the Dagger. Now, I think it is pretty undisputed that these are gorgeous book covers. Pretty much everyone I know really enjoys these. I really like, you know, kind of the peekaboo type effect here. We have these like designs, like it's like a star and like another type of design all around and we can kind of see the female protagonist through them a little bit and then we get this delightful surprise and we can fully see her once we open up the book this gorgeous purple just screams royalty she's dressed beautifully the book cover itself it's this beautiful purple with this gold foil with the lettering everything about this book cover is very satisfying and then it continues on to the back with the patterns it's just really great and we have the same peekaboo type effect in the second book and we see her again we do have a different color scheme going here but the same pretty much the same idea and once again we see her in this stunning red gown in the middle of the desert it is very arabian nights take me away and once again we have this stunning book cover with the gold foil lettering everything about this is superb they go together very very well and they look great on your bookshelf love it next up i have one of the most beautiful book cover book book covers I've probably ever seen and this is The Queen and the Tearling by Erica Johansson. Everything about this book cover literally stopped me in my tracks when I first saw this book and even though it was overly hyped for a while here on booktube and that was part of the reason I purchased it, this book cover also was like 85% of the reason why I bought this book, let's be real. Everything about this book cover screams like an epic fantasy but you know it's gonna be dark and just 
you know, deep and very intricate and probably a lot more serious than a young adult and it is, it is an adult book. You see like the kingdom back there, you see kind of what looks like could be the sunrise, could be the sunset, could be the kingdom on fire, which one is it? We don't know. You see like the gold in the back are the gold lettering with the black backdrop. I mean, everything here looks very mysterious. It looks like the princess is running away in the middle of the night type stuff. It just looks good. And then I also love the spine. We have that same kind of idea on the spine. And then we have a close up of the castle on the back. Everything about this is wonderful and just perfection, including the deckled edges. You guys know how I feel about deckled edges. I love them. And I also freaking love the inside cover. We have something that makes you know right away we are going on an epic adventure because we have the sea, we have boats. Whenever you have the sea and boats, you know you're going on an adventure, okay? Especially in a fantasy, you just know. Things are happening, things are about to go down. But yeah, I freaking love this book cover. I love the little red bookmark slash tassel. It's just everything about it is executed very, very well. One of my favorite book covers of all time. Another book cover that I just love, and I used to display it a few years ago when I first got my first bookshelf, and this is The Swan Gondola by Timothy Schaefer. This is so satisfying to look at. It's all graphics, and of course we have the swans down here that makes it look like maybe this could be a love story of sorts because we have the two swans facing each other and their beaks form a heart. So you kind of get the feel and the vibe of where this is going, but you also know it's gonna be a little quirky, a little nifty, not just because of the title, but because of the way everything is kind of laid out with the font and the graphics and the bright, you know, like blue color. This is really cool. It's And even on the top it says it's a quirky little gem and you just know by looking at the cover that it's gonna be a quirky little gem. So they did a perfect job of the cover encapsulating the book. Then you have this beautiful spine in white and the lettering in blue and then it continues on the back, lettering in white, everything else in blue. It's just perfect. I love it. Haven't read it yet, but I love it. This video is literally just shaming me and making me realize that my TBR list is way too long. It's it's horrific. Next up, I have an, another one of those people on the cover. I think the last couple are people on the cover, but it's fine. And this one is Intertwined, or excuse me, yeah. Entwined, not intertwined, Entwined. And this is by Heather Dixon. I remember I bought this book a long time ago, and I remember how much I really enjoyed the cover, and I was debating whether I wanted to get the hard back or the paperback. I ended up going with the paperback, but I kind of regret it a little bit. I feel like the hardback would have been really stunning. The paperback itself is incredibly stunning. I am a sucker for a girl in a gorgeous gown on the book cover. I'm sorry. I'm one of those people, if it's done well. I think this one is done incredibly well. You definitely get everything that this book is trying to tell you. You know it's a fairy tale, whether it's a fairy tale retelling or not. You know you are in a fantasy world in a faraway land, and this girl is running away from something or towards something. We have this kind of decrepit Bit, almost looking castle in the background that looks a little foreboding and we have her in her beautiful gown with the bow on the back not a fan of the gown but it does its job then we have the kind of leaves in foil here makes it look very like enchanted you know sleeping beauty-esque she's clearly in the middle of a forest so we know something's about to go down but yeah all in all I really do enjoy the book cover and on the back we also have a close-up of the top of the castle love it 10 out of 10. Next up, I have a classic that I adore. This is my all-time favorite book, so if you've been watching this channel, then you already know what it is. And this is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This has been my favorite book since I read it in the fifth grade at the age of 10, and it'll probably continue to be my favorite book until I die. And I freaking love this edition. I'm not 100% sure what this edition is, but it's one of the Penguin, oh, it says right here. The Penguin Threads edition, there we go. And it is really just like a little, you know, needlework. You know how women used to do needlework? It definitely looks like that. Everything is threaded out and just very meticulous and intricate. It is always really hard to see this on camera and have it show up because of the lighting. And I will do a close-up so you guys can see what I am talking about and how beautiful and intricate it is. And just from this book cover and all the detail, you know exactly what this book is going to be about 
and what you are getting yourself into. You know, you're getting yourself into a heartfelt classic that is about family and the times. And then we have this, you know, kind of binding here that wraps everything up. And then it even goes further into the back with the stitching and the needlepoint type of vibe. I love it. When I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And I just, I'm so glad that I own it and it is part of my collection. Wrapping up here, I have two Rainbow Rowl novels, and these are the special editions of these novels, and yes, they have people on the cover, but it's done very well. And the first one I have to show you is Carry On, and I freaking love this version of Carry On. I find it to be so interesting. I find the artwork to be very attention-grabbing, so I love how both Simon and Baz are on the cover, and the sword, and the wand, and the dragon eye, and the colors, I think it's fab. My my camera's about to die, so if I'm talking fast, that's what's going on. I also have Fangirl here, the special edition. This is a, the exclusive collector's edition that was being sold via Barnes & Noble. And, you know, Fangirl is probably my favorite Rainbow Rowell novel that I've read. And I think this cover captures everything very perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly wrap up the video here before my camera dies. Thank you so much for watching and joining me. I will catch you guys in my next video. Make sure you like this video. It really helps a lot when you thumbs up the video or like, you know, showing my age on YouTube. And also comment down below and please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, hit the notifications bell. I will catch you guys later. Mwah! Bye guys. Definitely kind of a trigger warning if you grew up in a household with like mental abuse, slight physical abuse, um, if you grew up in a, child, in a household with people who abused substances, trigger warnings for that, but so good, you guys, so good. Next up, I have a brilliant story, what? Fairy tale retelling, I can't talk, you guys. Fairy tale retelling, and this is Spindles End by Robin McKinley, and it is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And this one, I will say,